Hello, my name is Trisha, and I am an adult child of an alcoholic. When I recall my childhood, I can remember that my father loved me very deeply, and he would do anything for our family. However, he suffered from major depression and childhood trauma. He was an immigrant who was financially struggling to support our family, and he was in pursuit of the American dream. He often felt that he was failing, and as a result, he would drink heavily. And when he did, he would be emotionally abusive to my mother and to me. At home, I would feel scared and unsafe. I so desperately wanted my father to be happy again, and I couldn't fix this. And this pain would be so deep within me that I would hide within myself, and I would escape in my books, my academics, and my theater arts in hopes that I would find safety there. <sighs> my greatest fear in school is if kids really knew what was happening at home, would they still like me? And this would lead me into a never-ending negative thinking loop that would sound a lot like this. There's something wrong with me. I'm not good enough, and I'm not safe. These beliefs would affect me for the rest of my life, even into my adulthood. See, my conclusion was, how can I make meaningful relationships with others if I can't even connect to my whole self? So, it was around this time I decided to begin my own therapy sessions. It was in actually my early 20s. My therapist and I began to work on my childhood traumas. And we made great accomplishments together, but I continued to feel shame for what happened in the past. It was around this time I was preparing for my oral examination, which is required re obtaining my master's degree in graduate school. I was experiencing some of the worst anxiety I'd ever felt in my entire life. I couldn't take it anymore. And uh, I asked her, there's got to be another way. And then she recommended a new therapy. EMDR. Eye movement desensitization reprocessing. I had never heard of this before, but I was willing to try anything. Well, within four EMDR sessions, my anxiety was disappearing. I was experiencing powerful insights that I had never experienced before in previous sessions, and I was healing rapidly. Have you ever seen something so beautiful that it left you speechless? That's how I felt about EMDR. I wanted to know everything about it, where it came from, how it came to exist, and how could I begin to use this in my own therapy sessions with my clients. See, I consider this knowledge a gift that I want to continue to pay forward, and I'm compelled today to share with you my own personal story of how EMDR has allowed me to heal from my own childhood traumas. But before I do this, I would like to talk with you about EMDR and how it came to exist. In 1987, Dr. Francine Shapiro discovered EMDR during a time that she was battling cancer. She was on a walk, and she observed that her disturbing thoughts were disappearing. She had not done this deliberately, but at the moment of reflection, she realized her eyes were rapidly moving. So she came up with a theory. Bilateral movement, eyes moving from left to right, would allow for disturbing memories to be seen in new and less distressful ways. Now, research studies are currently showing that eye movement in EMDR resembles the same process as REM sleep, rapid eye movement. REM occurs in the same stage of sleep as dreaming. And although the exact mechanisms are not well understood at this time, scientists believe that this is where the brain can store memories, interpret lessons, balance moods, and coincidentally, it can process survival information that typically comes from traumatic experiences. But unlike REM, 
The mind is completely awake during EMDR therapy, which allows for clients to be able to process and access complexities of their traumas. So now that you know what EMDR is, I'd like to talk with you about my own very personal experience of what it was like to go through an EMDR session. So you may be wondering why I have this backpack, right? It's a simple backpack, one that we see all the time. It's very easy to dismiss. But this backpack was one of the very first vivid images that I saw on the first time that I had my EMDR session. My therapist asked me to recall my worst performance anxiety with the use of bilateral movement. And just like a flashback, I was a sophomore in high school, about to give my final monologue on stage, and I was in front of my drama class. I was excited, expecting support, delivering my lines, and then I was interrupted by the sounds of whispering, laughter, and snickering. I felt horrified that day. And I told myself I would never go back on stage again. Because it proved exactly what I thought was true about myself, is I wasn't good enough. There was something wrong with me. It would also be a reminder that I didn't feel safe and I didn't feel protected by my teacher in the same way I felt towards my father at home. And then it would hit me all at once. This backpack was symbolic of lost childhood innocence. I felt like I lost the theater arts that day the same way I felt like I lost my dad to alcohol. And I felt no longer that shame of, I was just a kid. I was trying to fit in and belong in school, just like it wasn't my fault that my dad was an alcoholic. And this would be a powerful insight that would be life-changing for me to recognize this is finally I was able to confront my negative thinking loop. It was a visceral experience. So you can imagine, after experiencing my EMDR session, I was convinced I wanted to use this with my own clients. And so I began to be trained and certified in EMDR. I used it in my private practice, and my clients would experience great healing as a result of this, this therapy. But I began to observe a clear pattern that was occurring. My clients would consistently come in and deny that they had any traumas they needed to work on when, in fact, they always did. And so I have come up with my own theory, and that is we will all experience a trauma at some point in our lifetime. The American Psychological Association defines trauma as an emotional response to a terrible event. A terrible event can be a life-threatening moment, such as combat, an accident, or rape, as well as a loss of a loved one, a loss of a job, or even a significant breakup. And from a physiological standpoint, when we look at trauma, our bodies will automatically go into fight, flight, faint, and freeze mode, and our brains will then memorize every aspect of the perceived trauma, taking in those five senses to protect us from having to ever experience that perceived danger ever again. And when you think about it, that's exactly what happened to me in my body. My body and my brain, I was going into this never-ending negative thinking loop. The only difference this time was bilateral movement was being introduced that helped me to finally gain control of my entire nervous system. So, my childhood traumas have caused me to disconnect from my whole self, making it difficult for me to have meaningful relationships with others. In my first EMDR session, I discovered that my body, my brain, and my eyes could heal me. I was healing me. And if this was possible, this proved that, in fact, 
there was nothing wrong with me, that I could heal myself. And this was significant to realize that there was, in fact, not only nothing wrong with me, that it wasn't my fault. The same way that all children deserve to feel safe at home and at school, I deserved that as well. And in realizing this, I would have genuine love and forgiveness for all parts of myself, the traumatized self included. So I leave you with these final thoughts. I am an adult child of an alcoholic, and I will no longer be defined by my past traumas. I do believe that we will experience a trauma at some point in our lifetime. But I also believe that we have the capability of incredible, tremendous healing. I've seen it with my very own eyes as a client and as a therapist. And so with that, I ask each of you, if we were all to choose to process our most traumatized memories and instead found our most kind and compassionate selves, I wonder what you would see. I also wonder how different our world might be. Thank you so much.